why we have five five a jackpot? Why we get a jackpot? Any idea? Any idea? Any idea? Any idea? Any idea? So, 
after they pray a fast, they call sleep. <laughs> yeah, there are some people don't know how to face it. They, they just encounter this spot. And they know that sleep can trick the concentration. Then they put a sleep there. <laughs> so it's guaranteed concentration happens. After it creates a press. Okay? So this is a, a, a lousy solution. My solution is to back it up. So that uh, no matter how, when you start executing, you will always point to that only location that are located to you. Okay? Good. Any other questions? Okay. So, last piece. Last piece of thing is, well, basically is allow, Fred allows you to return results back to your calling Fred. Now, every, everything is ready. Basically, you can use this model to write parallel quick sort. Right? You, you sort. And while you are sorting, you put the sorting array onto global variable sort. Yeah, put it on the global variable sort. Create threads. Because they just, if you understand quick sort, quick sort is like this. You separate into two sort. The two sort, they don't interrupt each other. Right? I use a, I use a upper side of a memory, you use a lower side of memory. Then, here is the output. You can use the output or not, it depends on you. Okay? Or you're finding merge sort, then merge sort will lead the output. Because merge sort is telling, yeah, this is the start of my, um, I finished sort and this is my starting location. Okay? So basically, this is the way, and it's also the basic construct for you to write parallel sorting. Very, very easy. Are you, if you're interested, you can try. Now, somebody already have concern about uh, scheduling of threads. Okay, so basically, we have two models. Uh, maybe we have the number three models, okay? It depends on how you classify a model, okay? I just put you some, put, give you some extreme cases. The first extreme case is what we call many to one model. So what is many, what is one? From the left to the right, it means from the user level code, map to the kernel structure, okay? So always like this, from the user, map to kernel. So that means that many user threads map into one kernel structure. So what does that mean? Yeah, very, very low level, right? High level, okay? High level means that all threads are being pretended by, by using some libraries. Some libraries pretend that there exist threads, but the kernel don't know there is a thread. The kernel only knows that you are one process. I don't know there are threads. Don't threads are frank. Frank in the sense that you can write that program, but really, you are not writing things in parallel. There exists a system like this, old style units. We have this kind of uh, fake scenario. You can create threads, no problem. I allow you to create because they are fake. Okay, so how to fake it? To fake it, uh, some programming language is very good at it, okay? Just, just now, some people, uh, some, uh, one or two students already uh, discussed with me, called green threads. Okay, what is green threads? Okay, basically you need to understand what is virtual machine. Like a Java virtual machines or a Python virtual machine. Basically that program, a Python, how many of you write Python? Okay, good, then, then you understand. How many of you write Java? What? So how about, how about those who take my class? Where are you? Uh, this guy, huh? Some of you take my class, okay? Java, okay? So basically that language use the process to run that code. Whether that process will create real threads for you is another problem. You know, because you, you use a program to emulate the things and the tasks go to the program, the Python program or the Java virtual machine program. And what is green threads? Green threads is uh, something that is, is virtual, okay? So Java, virtual thread, not real thread. Uh, Python, Go, Haskell, uh, a bunch of things. They are all fake. Uh, Ruby also fake. A uh, small talk. Uh, if you take Fluent X0, you will encounter this. Uh, many many things are fake. 
You say fix Friday. Okay? Remember, Colonel don't know you. Because the one who control all threads is the, like the Python engine. The Python engine control, and when Python engine receives CPU attention, it's trying to schedule pieces of thing inside your code. They basically they have their own scheduler inside the Python program. Java has its own scheduler inside to pretend to be there a fast running together. Okay? Wow. New things, huh? New things you never heard of. And what is the merit? The merit is the kernel becomes very easy, right? The kernel don't need to know who are you, okay? I, I just don't support you, okay? The demerit is what if the Python engine crash? What is the Python engine box called blocking system call? It will block all things, okay? So that's why uh, if, you are, if you want to learn more, Okay, you will understand later that uh, some something called AIO. Okay, you can already Google it down. AIO, asynchronous IO emerge because their operating system don't know what is threats. Okay. Another is another extreme one to one, mapping one phase of user space to another phase in the kernel. One to one mapping. One to one mapping means that kernel knows what is threat. Yeah, you create threats. Basically, inside the kernel, it creates a process. <laughs> yeah, another level of faking. Okay, you, you're being faked again. The kernel is now this time, oh, you want a threat, I do a fork. Okay? So that they are separated. Yeah. Which operating system do this? Linux. Windows, they do this. Mac seems to be doing this also. Okay? It's this don't care. How can you verify this? Very easy. The verification is you call a program, have threads. Okay? Now, if you follow my previous lecture, you always find that if I do a simple fork and print the PIDs, the PIDs usually stay together. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 5. Now, what if one, two, three, four create a thread and call four? That little thread will take one, two, three, five. And the next process you create will be one, two, three, six. Yes, you see, oh, why there is a gap there? That little thread steal your PID. <laughs> Linux is doing something like this. They don't export to you that there exists a PID for that thread. Hide it. Don't let you see it. Okay, but eventually, it just schedule and run all things just like a normal process. Okay? So that's why I said this is another extreme. And what is the good about this? We call it native thread. Usually, you look up uh, some wiki, some, uh, some books, it will call it native thread. Native in the sense that really the operator support and it allows you to even fix one thread in a user level to a CPU core because the kernel knows who are you. The kernel just treat you as a normal process, okay? So we call it a thread affinity, or yeah, thread affinity. Yeah, I, I type it in Google, okay? Thread affinity, okay? Oh, you, you already see this uh, Java? Any? No, sorry. Uh, uh, set affinity for prefet. Yeah, prefet can set it, okay? Oh, by the way, what is MP? MP is a non 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 portable. Non portable means that some system has, some system don't have. Okay. Interesting, huh? Prefet or or threads as a as a topic. Basically, we can spend three months talk about it. Many many issues, but I can only give you some uh, very uh, easy to understand things. So if it become a diagram, the previous extreme is basically we have a thread library. I receive CPU attention, and who who am I? I am the thread library. But these two threads are fake. This is the previous extreme. The later extreme is like this. Since kernel 2.6, that means now they will all support this. We have this uh, thread is process concept. A thread is a process. Basically, we, when, when I look at kernel codes, the kernels don't separate what is a thread, what is a, what is a process. Only when you call exit. 
right? We're quite sick. Oh, quite sick that uh, all others are. Uh, uh, Fred will, should die, so I'll kill all other friends together. Okay? Any question you want to ask? This is interesting, right? Any question you want to ask? No? Yes? Could he have Fred? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes? Is upset. The the PID. Yes. <laughs> this is the thing. They they will keep a good concept. Yeah. You are a friend, but you call PID. So I won't report you the secret ID. I will pre present to you the process ID. Uh, so so what if we, we use something yeah. about in the class? What if we use find task by PID you want to in, in in the class find by PID, the friend. We will find the friend. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's why you have to uh, make it very clear that in the kernel side, is another story, in user space, they still have this separation. Yes. Uh, virtually, yes. Virtually, they are the same process. But in reality, they can go into different processor, behave just like a process. Yeah, inside kernel they are they are just separate process. But in in the user space you can only see one process only. Yes. 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 Interesting. Huh? Oh, by the way, you can call a call called get PID. A system call called get PID, then you can review that hidden ID. Yes. I can hear. Very interesting. You cannot send any signal to that hidden ID. <laughs> it couldn't separate, so really separate the world. You will still look at it as a threat, but the kernel separated. You know that. It, it was just like saying that, oh, I cannot find the key ID. Mm. Oh, very interesting, huh? Okay? So you uh, CPU choose thread If you want? So you CPU choose thread and then you have to choose thread You mean in an old style Unix? You use speed thread? No, this oh, is a share, very interesting. They just yeah, behave, behave as just what I teach you. And there is a secret. The secret I will disclose to you while we talk about our virtual memory. They really share memory. They really share memory. Yes. No, no, no. no, no. Where are they separated? It is doable. Very interesting. And this is because of the number they see you design. Okay? All those stuff comes. I only have to do this. All those stuff. How horrible it is. Segmentation and uh, virtual exclusion. Get ready. So, what are the things that you have to separate them? What are the things? You have to separate two areas. One is shareable, one is not shareable, right? Not shareable is something that inside your local variable song. They are not share some hosts, they are not share at this little pointer. This pointer point there. And then another story. How about these two guys? Global variable and malloc. You need to set up protection. You need to use semaphore. Wow, semaphore. Well, by the way, the prefect model, okay, they they surrender the use of semaphore. They use an odd thing, okay? And this thing is good to you. Because Java uses the same model. Many operating systems, many programming languages also use this model. I will tell you what it is. Yes? Uh, it is it's called, not F, it's called uh, monitor. Monitor, monitor model. Yeah, you can Google it and call, uh, find uh, Ada, the programming language called Ada, Ada and monitor. And you will find this. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah this is uh, a channel, okay. 
So, the computer. We will use it as a model. That model is even more easier to use. It separates binary sample form, okay, and counting sample form, and don't let you to use counting sample form. Only give you binary sample form, okay? And what is the binary sample form? It is called mutant. There is a type called mutant. Wow, cool. So how to use it? Uh, I won't test you code in the final exam, so I will skip the code part. Uh, this is the menu for for those who take proper phase zero. Huh? Take that, okay, then you will need to refer this. Okay? So basically, what are the methods that you can uh, init it? You can lock, you can unlock. Mutant, you can lock, you can unlock. Very simple, because it's a binary sample. Form. Binary means that you can turn it from one to zero, then it's locked. But if it's zero, you still want to lock to the block. Now, how about zero to one? It's unlocked. But when you already unlock, you cannot unlock it again. Because it's only binary, so you in unlock state, you still call unlock, nothing will happen. Okay? So I write a program. What is this program is about? So this is the threatening function. Okay? This is the threatening function. I just extract the threatening function. Let's say I create five threads. Five threads to execute the same functions here. And what is this global variable? This is the global variable called share. Okay? So do you know what this program is about? What is prefab mutant lock? It is the binary semaphore. You down that binary semaphore, so that is lock action. What is that? Give me one minute. Uh, the interesting part is here. <laughs> What this program is doing? Let's say I have five threads to do the same thing. Oh, by the way, what is the initialization value of share? It's zero. Okay. There, already written the, the value is zero. What is this? Maximum. Oh, sorry, maximum maybe 100. Okay, I forgot to write the maximum. Yes, I hear your answer. How about this? What is that? What is this program is doing? Let's say I have five friends. First of all, the first question. The five friends, they will execute in pair. But they will be blocked by a lock, right? Yes. The five friends continuously try to get a lock. When they get the lock, they will add one to the share object, and then unlock, and let the others process to go to your uh, raise for this chance to add one. When the five friends add together, find that the object now become 100, they will stop. Okay? And I introduce some random, random context switching here. <laughs> I either sleep zero or sleep one. Okay? So then we will have a random uh, context switching effect here. Okay? So let's just see this. Okay? So uh, I, I love to call this do your job. Okay? Yeah, this spreading function, do your job. Okay? And who is the shared object here? Okay? This is shared object. And also, as a matter of fact, the maximum value is also a shared object, right? It's shared across all threads. So it's here. And I will pass down a thread ID. Pass down a thread ID. This is a thread ID, so I set as a number. So that every thread knows their identity. I'm 0, I'm 1, I'm 2, I'm 3, I'm 4. Okay? Then this thread functions just do the same thing. 
as I written in the PowerPoint, except this I++. Later, I will show you what is I++. OK? Then the main. OK, the main, I just do random things. Uh, initialize random randomization uh, using a C, and then set up a thread. And the thread creation is done there. For loop, create a thread, and then they start. At last, prepare join. That's all. OK? So let's go up. Now this program allows me to add the, the end of the maximum value and the number of threads. Okay, so let's try a small number. Uh, 20 and 3 threads. Okay? 20, 3 threads. So the 3 threads, uh, they will rush to add the shared objects, but you won't find any duplicate numbers. That means that no threads will see the same number. Right? This is not, not possible, right? Because I, I locked it already. Only one thread can see a number and add it by one. Okay? So you will see this pattern, and you can see it uh, not, not very even, right? Let's try again. Let's try the bigger number, 105 threads. And it, it takes some time. Wow, I shouldn't choose 100. <laughs> uh, no, no, the, it, it is slow because of I, I sleep there. I introduced uh, some random uh, context for check. Uh, still not even, but uh, okay, right. still okay, right? <laughs> still okay. Uh, I, I guess it should be 20, correct? Okay? So I know what you're thinking. Making it big is not good, right? How about this? Wow. 200 threads. Okay, oh, maybe this number is too big. Okay. <laughs> 200 threads together, raise it together. So, as if it is uh, doing uh, some uh, fair job, every thread will add five. Can my computer support 200 threads? Wow. No problem, huh? Uh, seems to be 200 threads all there. Yeah, you think there's 17 for No, yeah, no kidding. Okay. 300! Go! No problem, huh? <laughs> now, how about 500? Oh, how about 500, huh? Ooh, what happened? 300 is okay, but why not 500? Let's try 400, huh? 500 would be too big, okay? 400! Still the same problem. Okay. Maybe okay. Oh, no, no. Okay? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe this. Maybe this is maybe possible. Yeah. That's possible. Okay. So why is this close to three hundred? Yeah. Because we need RAM. Where is the part that we need RAM? Hmm? Not fault. Don't have fault. Fault need RAM now. Local variable. Local variable. We create extra local variable. Right. We create extra local variable. Now, let me tell you how to calculate it. This is the extra thing, right? You create one flex, you will have one more clock. Each is approximately 8 megabyte. Approximately 8 megabyte for one clock. OK? So 8 megabyte uh, calculator. 8 megabyte times 3, 000, uh, 300 is this around 2G, 2G of RAM. Okay, I create 300 threads, I need 2 gigabyte of RAM. How about I create 500 threads? 
4G already. Okay? Later, when I talk about memory, I will tell you what is the reason behind. The reason is I'm using very to be CPU. <coughs> very to CPU, sorry, to be CPU has a problem. It can only address up to three <coughs> gigabytes of RAM. It can only address three gigabytes. So three gigabyte divided by eight around this number. But we cannot push it to the limit, okay? We cannot push it. There's also overheads, right? I create global variables, I create methods, I I have a close, okay? So basically we have some overheads there. Later on, when we go through memory, I will teach you uh, great details on how to uh, do it. I still have one, one thing that I need to talk about in the synchronization, but I run out of time. Maybe I put it into the next time uh, lecture. Okay. What, what, what is that make, makeup lecture? 